There are around 1,200 tornadoes like this in the U.S. every year, all concentrated around this area. And it feels like the aftermath is always the same. Been hit by a tornado. Oh, we were hit. I heard Mike crying and saying, oh my God, I'm gonna die. But, but wait, hold on. Rewind there for a moment. Right there, stop. All of this wreckage is timber. These were wooden houses. If tornadoes are this common, if they can destroy your house, why aren't we building stronger houses? Didn't we learn that lesson as kids? I'm not American, so as fascinated and frightened as I am of tornadoes, I've had this question for years, and it turns out the answer is not as obvious as I thought. First of all, Americans are stubbornly obsessed with building with timber. An estimated 90% of new homes in America are still made of wood. In Texas, one of the states with the most tornadoes, this is the typical construction process, wooden frames, plywood walls. Some homes use brick on the outside, but they're often cosmetic and not load-bearing walls. Tornado shelters are no longer a thing. 97% of new homes built in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas don't have one. But just move a few miles down to Ciudad Juarez, where the GDP per capita is half of Texas's. Most construction is concrete bricks. Study after study, and real life experiences have shown that concrete can withstand the debris of tornado, mostly without structural damage. So why use wood? Is it a cost problem? Is it a lack of materials? Turns out it's neither. This required me to geek through a few spreadsheets though, and I'm gonna get to those in a sec. Here are two typical American houses. In 2023, an average 2,000 square foot home in the US with the usual timber framing construction cost around $250,000 to build. Meanwhile, the average concrete home would have cost around $350,000 or around 40% more. But by the way, there are tons of estimates of home building costs, some placing concrete homes almost at the same price as wooden homes. And this will, of course, vary significantly depending on what you pick. This balance got even closer post pandemic with the rise of timber prices, some placing it as close as only 5% extra per square foot of construction to build your home in, in concrete. Okay, but even if concrete is more expensive, isn't the tornado protection worth the extra cost? When an EF4, the second largest tornado in the scale, hits a home, it hits it with up to 200 mile per hour wind. The roof is often the first part to go, as wind enters through the broken windows or open doors, it increases the internal pressure of the home and creates the suction effect. And with the roof gone, walls, particularly those perpendicular to the wind's direction, are exposed to lateral forces that they are not designed to withstand. Also, tornadoes can hurl debris with incredible force. Objects picked up by a tornado become projectiles that can smash into homes, breaking windows and penetrating walls. A concrete home is protected against most of these factors, not to mention hurricanes or earthquakes, and they have better insulation, which translates to energy savings. It sounds obvious to me, so why aren't we doing it? Well, the thing is the US has been building timber homes for a long, long time. Historically, humans have built houses using many different materials, but still by the middle ages, urban European homes were already transitioning to stone and brick construction. But this never really happened in America. From traditional timber framing to balloon framing to finally platform framing, which is what we have today, timber has always been abundant in the US. It's cheap, it's fast, and Americans have been perfecting it for centuries. And this process is easy. Construction workers and contractors understand it, and they have a lot of experience, and people prefer building structures that they understand. I can barely put a nail on a wall, but many Americans feel comfortable making renovations or repairs on wooden homes. And well, poured concrete or concrete block homes have completely different care requirements. There's also resale value. Like a dome home, while resistant to many disasters, it's not for everyone. But even normal looking concrete homes tend to be harder to sell, mostly because home buyers are not used to the design and the maintenance of, well, the material that most people use. Let's put all of this in a scale. I get why wood makes sense. But to me, survive a tornado is enough to tilt the scale over, though most Americans would seem to disagree. In part, that's because as scary, common, devastating, as clickbaity as tornadoes might be, the odds of a tornado hitting your home are very, very low. This article says that the chances of being hit by a tornado are one in four million, but I'm not gonna bet my home on that. This article says it's one in 5.6 million, which is it? This 1986 paper says that the highest probability area is in central Oklahoma, and there's a one in 1.6 million chance of your home being hit by a tornado. So I asked ChatGPT, I asked it to run this math for me, and it landed at a one in 4.1 million probability of being hit by a tornado in an 80 year lifetime by living in the US tornado alley. 
Either way, may it be one in 12,000 or one in four million, it's too damn high, if you ask me. But many people in tornado areas don't feel tornadoes like I do. Here in the Midwest, you have tornado warnings and you take cover all the time. You guys ever been through a tornado no, before? No, I've never seen one in my life. No part of me thought that we wouldn't be safe. This map shows the average number of days in a year when each of these areas experiences a tornado within 25 miles of any point. For most of Tornado Alley, it's under one day a year. People go entire lifetimes without seeing a tornado. So it's definitely not the imminent danger that we outsiders perceive it to be or that the news suggests it is. Still, if you're the one in 4,199,916 odds of getting hit, insurance is gonna cover it. And it turns out that mentality is exactly the root of this predicament. Let's say that we go out and build one of those houses that we discussed earlier, a 2,000 square foot home. If we build it with wood, we're gonna pay around $284,000 to build it. And if we build it in concrete blocks or ICF, it'll cost around $350,000. Assuming that we cover a 20% down payment for both homes, here's what we'll end up paying in mortgage interest. And then of course, most certainly, you have to insure it. And I really do mean that you have to insure it. Not insuring your home is as unthinkable in the US as living without health insurance. If you owe part of your home to the bank, you need insurance. And around 60% of US homes currently have a mortgage on them. Plus, the US is one of the most litigious countries in the world. Americans love lawsuits. You don't want to risk a lawsuit from your tenant or from your neighbor or for some random reason like you're dog biting someone or, or a tree falling over your neighbor. Having an uninsured home in the US is like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Only 7.4% of homes in the country are uninsured compared to, for example, 25% of homes in the UK that don't have insurance. Not getting insurance isn't even an option. Let's add it to the equation. The average premium in Texas is $4,300 and we're gonna use that for wooden homes. The premiums for insuring a concrete home can be around 25% lower because it's a safer home. But okay, let's add that to the adjustment, which makes premiums similar despite the higher construction cost and the higher dwelling coverage. Not accounting for repairs or maintenance or potential power savings, living in a wooden home for 30 years will cost you around $572,000, while on a concrete home, it'll cost you around $746,000. Let's assume a $1,000 standard deductible. Essentially, you could have 10 tornadoes hit your house and have to rebuild it time again, 10 times. And it's still cheaper to keep the wooden home. And that is the point of this whole thing. Concrete just makes no financial sense for Americans, even those living in the tornado alley. So is that it? In the end, building a tornado proof home like insurance is a question of odds. You can save a few hundred thousand dollars and build a bigger house, or you can build a safer, I'll be smaller one like the third pig did. You are more likely to be hit by lightning than by a tornado, but you don't wanna be that person. Last year, at least 82 people were killed by tornadoes, and this is how many of them we've had so far this year. Most tornado casualties happen in cars or in mobile homes, but wooden homes with no shelters are very vulnerable too. Most Texans have stopped building tornado shelters for their homes with neither underground nor reinforced concrete rooms inside the house. And the general reason is that, well, people don't wanna pay for them. And there's no mandate to build them either. But then again, are you willing to gamble this chance, this possibility against an extra $250,000? I'm actually asking that. You wanna drop that in the comments. See you on the next one.